Please accept my obeisance to Chandra Charam Prabhu and all senior devotees. So today we will listen to the lecture of Srila Prabhupada on Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 10, read and delivered in, on the 16th of November in Delhi. Thank you, everything is fine with me. So we can begin. Please my accept, accept my obeisances. Лекция по Шримад Бхагаватам, первая песня, глава 2, текст 10, прочитана его божественной милостью Аче Бхактивдантой с вами Прабхупады. Запись сделана 16 ноября 1973 года в Дели, Индия. Мы поклоняемся Кришне. Как мы уже говорили, As we said, Рада Мадава. Рада Мадава. Кришна. What is Krishna doing? He loves Shimati Radharani. Krishna это тот, кто любит. Krishna is the one who loves. Это само имя. The very name Krishna means все привлекающий. All attractive. Вы можете привлекать других. You may attract others with your love. Ничем другим. Nothing else. Therefore, his name is Krishna. I read one book. It was called Gospel of the Epoch of the Aquarius. That was the name by Christians. It was said, it was said that the word Krista. It is a Greek word, and the meaning of Krista is lover, anointed. So I think the word Christ is Abharamsha of Christo and Christo. In India, still, if one's name is Krishna, we call him Christo or sometimes Kesto. My younger brother, his name was Krishna, so in family we were calling him Kesto. That is very current. So actually, love, the word love, has come from Krishna. That is a fact. Therefore, you will see always Krishna, always with Radharani. We worship Krishna, Radha Krishna, Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Rama. This is Vaishnava's worshipable deity. We do not worship alone God. We, Vaishnava, we want to see Krishna and his energy, potency. That is the Vedic system. Поэтому Мы, Вайшнавы, мы хотим видеть Кришну вместе с Его энергией. Такова ведическая традиция. In the Vedas it is said, Upanishad. Upanishad, it is said, the Supreme Master of Truth, he has nothing to do. 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 
He has nothing to do. Everything is being done by his potencies. Just like a big man, a big businessman, or a big the president of the state, he personally does not do anything. But his energies, his secretaries and others, they do everything. He simply signs or gives sanction. So this is the fact. God has nothing to do. Everything is being done very nicely by his energies. Just like the sunshine or, or the sun planet is one of the energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the whole material world is being conducted very nicely by the sunshine. This is scientific. Due to the sunshine, all the planets, they are rotating in their prescribed orbit and nobody is colliding with one another. Everything is going nicely, sunshine. Due to sunshine, the seasonal changes are taking place, and the varieties of trees, plants are growing. Everything is going on. The moon is also working under sunshine. And due to the moon, there are, wa there are wa waves in the sea. There are changes of the ebb tide and low tide. So one energy of the sunshine is doing so much things. His energies are working so nicely that Svabhaviki Gyana Bala Kriyacha, Svabhava Natural, just like a rose flower is coming into existence. Just like a rose flower is coming into existence, very nicely painted, very nicely colored, very nicely flavored, so it requires brain. How can you say that it has been done automatically? No, there is brain, that is said in the Bhagavad Gita. The nature is working under his direction, but his direction is so complete that it appears to us as it is being done automatically, not automatic. There is brain behind it. Just like nowadays, there are so many mechanical inventions. You just push one button and things come, as we see in the airplane. There are simply... Uh, the pilot is working simply by pushing some buttons, and such a big, gigantic plane is floating in the sky. We can understand. The television simply by pushing one button. So if materially it is so much advanced, perfection is possible. You can just imagine spiritually how much it is perfectly possible. So this perfection of love, we are also after love. A young man is after love, a young boy is after love. So where from this love comes? Because originally the love is there in Krishna. That is the version of the Vedanta Sutra. So this loving affair has come from the supreme absolute truth, but it is pervertedly reflected only pervertedly reflected. Yatra Trisarga, Amrisha. Here in the material world we are simply seeing the perverted reflection of the spiritual world. Therefore, in Shriman Bhagavatam it is said in the beginning, we are 
лишь искаженное отражение мира духовного. Поэтому в Шимад Бхагаватам в начале говорится. Here everything is perverted, reflection, shadow, the example is given. Just like in the, in the desert, sometimes we find water. The reflection of the sunshine makes a false replica of water, exactly. But there is no water, there is no water and the reflection of water. Similarly, in this material world there is only reflection of that love. Actually, there is no love. It is the mirage on the desert. Therefore, if we want really love, this word can be applied only to Krishna, all attractive. Аналогичным образом в этом материальном мире мы наблюдаем лишь отражение любви. На самом деле здесь нет любви. Это мираж в пустыне. Поэтому, если мы действительно хотим любви, это слово можно применить только к Кришне, все привлекающие. So this Krishna consciousness movement is just to teach people not to be allured by the illusory so-called water and love of any or anything. There is one reality, Satyam Param Dhimahi. Just try to come to the real reality. Don't be entrapped by the false reality. This is Krishna consciousness movement. We are entrapped by the false reality, Maya. Не попадайтесь в ловушку ложной реальности. Такова цель сознания Кришны. Мы оказались в ловушке иллюзорной реальности. Майи. Майя, just like the deer, he runs over the false water in the desert. But the water goes ahead more and more, and the poor animal without finding water dies. But a sane man does not go. A sane man knows that reflection of water is not water, but that does not mean, because there is no water in the desert, it does not mean that there is no water. The water is there, but not in the desert. That is knowledge. Что так как в пустыне нет воды, это не означает, что воды вообще не существует. Вода есть, но не в пустыне. Это знание. Therefore, we were discussing last night this verse. Дживася татва джигеса. Дживася татва джигеса. Every living entity should be inquisitive to know where is real pleasure. Because we are hunting up to pleasure, everyone. Ananda Mayopyasat. Because we are by nature Ananda Maya. Because we are part and parcel of Krishna. Mamaya Vamsha, Krishna says. Therefore, Krishna is Sachit Ananda Vigraha. Sat Chi Ananda. He is personified Sachit Ananda Vigraha. Vigraha means person or the form, transcendental form of such Ananda. Sat means eternity, and Chit means knowledge, and Ananda, pleasure. His body is such Ananda. <coughs> but our body is not such Ananda. This present body, the material body, it is neither Sat because it is temporary. Therefore, it is not Sat. And cheat. Oh, we are ignorant in so many things. There is no knowledge. Abod Hajata. This body means ignorance. This material body means ignorance. Abod Hajata. That is stated in the Shimad Bhagavatam. Parabhavashtavat Abod Hajata. Abod Hajata means the embodiment of ignorance. We do not know so many things. In our own body, I am claiming it is my body, but I do not know how the body is working, how we are taking food, how it is being transferred into different secretions, then the secretions go into the heart. 
And we know something by the medical science, but it is not perfect. Medical, si medical science fails. Although I am claiming, I do not know at least. The physician may know, the medical may may know, but I am claiming I am this body, but I do not know how it is working. Therefore, we are all about Hajata. About Hajata. Therefore, our business is to inquire about the truth. This is explained in this verse, Jivasitatva Jivyasa. This human life should be engaged for inquiring about the truth, anything, either of this body or of this material nature or about God, our interrelationship, so many things that have to be known. Therefore, in this verse it is said that Jivasya Tattva Jigyasa, it is not only our only business that simply to eat, sleep and have sex, life and defend. That is not our only business. That may be the business of the cats and dogs. But human life is not meant for that purpose. The civilization should be so molded that people will have the chance to think soberly about the truth of life. That is the point. That is called Tatva Jigyasa. For this purpose, the Vedic civilization is perfect. Vedic civilization is for everyone. But nowadays, it is said that it is for the Indians or for the Hindus or... But actually, it is meant for everyone. Just like here it is said, Jivasya Tatva Jigyasa. It is everyone's duty to inquire about the Absolute Truth. Where is the question of Hindu, Muslim, or this or that? Truth, truth is truth. 2 plus 2 equal to 4. It is accepted by the Hindus, Muslims, Christians, and everyone. Science is science. So, therefore, we should be interested about inquiring. This is the confirmation in every scripture in the Bhagavata also. That is also this is also Bhagavata. In Bhagavata, in another place, it is said, Tasmat Guru Prapadya Tenjigya Sukhshriya Uttamam. Those who are actually inquisitive to know the value of life, the absolute truth, he must approach a guru. Here also it is said, Jivasya Tattva Jigyasa. Jigyasa means somebody in inferior position inquires from the superior man. Then there is Jigyasa. Just like a child inquires from his father. Intelligent child always inquires, Father, what is this, what is this, what is this? And father explains. In this way the child gets experience. So similarly here it is said that Jivasya Tattva Jigyasa, every human being, it is human being. Jivasya, the general meaning is all living entities, but all living entities cannot inquire. That is not possible. The cats and dogs, they cannot inquire. There are four millions and four, four hundred thousand species of life, out of which this human form of life is competent to inquire about the truth. Therefore, here it is said, Jivasya Tatra Jigyasa, Tartvoyash Chekha Karmabhik. Now another place in Bhagavad Gita. Now another place in Bhagavad Gita it is said uh, 
So from whom you will have to inquire? From a person who has actually seen what is tattva, what is truth, from him. Therefore, I was speaking yesterday, last night, in Hindi, that the tattva is not to be inquired from a panwala or bidiwala. No, one who has actually seen the tattva, tattva darshi. <coughs> So, according to Vedic scripture, a Tattva Darshi should be very pure, uncontaminated. Therefore, generally, we go to the qualified Brahmana, Satyam, Shamo, Damas, Ditik, Sharjavam, Gyanam, Vigyanam, Astikyam, Brahma, Karma, Svabhavajam, one who is qualified. <coughs> So, according to Vedic system, a guru generally he must be a Brahmana, any guru. It doesn't matter, it doesn't require that he is to take birth in a Brahmana family. If he is qualified, then he is guru. If he is not qualified, then he cannot become guru. Even becoming a Brahmana, qualified Brahmana, one does not become a guru if he is not a Vaishnava. That is the injunction of the Shastra. Sad Vaishnava, one has to become Vaishnava. Vaishnava means one who is a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, Krishna instructed Arjuna. He said, Bhakto si priyosi. Because you are my Bhakta, therefore I am talking to you. So, Guru means a Vaishnava. He must be a representative of Krishna. <coughs> Krishna is the Supreme Lord, Supreme Guru. He is the first Guru. Krishna imparted knowledge to the original person, Brahma. You may inquire that Brahma is the original person. There was nobody present. Then who became his Guru? No, that is explained. Tena Brahma Hrida, from through the heart. Krishna, O oh God, is situated in everyone's heart. As you become purified, He speaks. He speaks always, but in our impure condition, we cannot hear. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, it is said also. So, as Paramatma, Super Soul, Krishna is always prepared, ready to help every one of us. But provided we take his advice, we take his instruction. <coughs> he says in the Bhagavad Gita, those who are Satata Yuktanam means 24 hours engaged. The Sham Satata Yuktanam Bajatam, in which business engagement, Bajatam, in the devotional service. Such person, Bajatam, what kind of Bajatam? Priti Purvakam, with love and affection. Such person, Budhi Yogam Dadamitam. So, what kind of Budhi Yoga? This Tattva Jigyasa, Yema Mam Upayantite. This such instruction by which one can approach me, one can understand me, Upayanti. In another place, Krishna says, Bhaktya Mam Abhijanati Yavam Yashchas Mitatvata. 
And so here also it is said, Jivasya Tattva Jigyasa. So if we want to know the Tattva, the Absolute Truth, then we have to go through the process. That process is simply to engage oneself in the loving devotional service of the Lord. By these blunt senses, materially blunt, just like with blunt instrument, you cannot take any benefit, it must be sharpened. Similarly, the senses, you utilize the senses to understand the absolute truth, but it must be purified, sharpened, just like a knife. When it is sharpened, it cuts very nicely. If it is blunt, it does not. But you can use the same very knife, so you can use this very eyes. Now you cannot see God or Krishna, but if you purify these eyes, if you purify the senses, you can see God. You can talk with God, you can serve God, everything. That is possible, that is bhakti. We have to purify the senses. Now I am thinking, this hand is my hand, or this hand is my society's hand, my family's hand, or my nation's hand, my community's hand, the party, designation. But actually, this hand belongs to Krishna, and therefore this hand should be used for Krishna's purpose, not for anything else. That is called Sarvopadhi Vinir Muktam Tatparatvena Nirmala. Purify. Actually, that, uh, therefore, Krishna's name is Krishikesha. When the senses are purified, then with that purified senses, Krishikena, Krishikena means senses. By these senses, Krishikena, Krishikesha, Sevano, Bhakti, Ruchete. This is Bhakti. So, Tatva Jigyasa. Everyone should be inquisitive to inquire about the value of life. Not like cats and dogs, no inquiry, simply we go walk, walking in the morning. We see so many nice bungalows, they are sleeping, they are sleeping as if the sleeping will save, save him. No, Ahara Nidra Bhaya Maitkuna, these four things, they are thinking that these four things will save him. No. Now we are situated in a very nice bungalow, very good income, very good wife and children. But any moment you can be kicked out of the situation and you have to accept another body, which is not very comfortable. This is nature's law. This is Tattva Jigyasa. If we simply foolishly think, now I am very secure, that is God. Um, there is a break. Vrindavana, uh, they were ministers in the government of Nawab Hussein Shah. But when they lived in Vrindavana about their life, it is said by Srinivas Acharya, Nidra Hara Vihara Kadi Vijitao. These things, Nidra Ahara Vihara. Nidra means sleeping, Ahara means eating, and Vihara means sense gratification. So, Nidra Hara Vihara Vihara Kadi Vijitao. Conquer. Conquer. We have to conquer. This is called Jitendriya. So, Tatva Jigyasa. This life is meant for Tatva Jigyasa. Not a single moment should be wasted if we actually want to save oneself. But we do not know what is saving. We do not know, even we do not understand. Here, uh, at the moment, we have 10 participants in Zoom, and we have uh, over 170 um, view viewers in the audience. <coughs> um, how many leaders are here? Here are the list of participants. Krishna, 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 Krishna,
Григорий, простите, я вот здесь не, не вижу, как написано, я не знаю, духовный имеет мат Джавантика и Сарабажный Прабу. Вот, Константин, подробный такой у нас сегодня состав. Мы с Антоном Гасами will begin the discussion. Хари Кришна, Диари Паучес. Хари Кришна, не слышно, как нет? Ома Гьяна, Кимирам, Дэкте, Ганам, Ганам, Саракава. Как Сурья Милитан, Дэйна, Тат, Малыш, Тану, Дэйна, Дэйна, Дэйна. Хари Кришна, еще раз спасибо организаторам. Thank you for, to organizers and also to the audience. It's very pleasant to be in a beach or sangha with devotees. At first, well, what has touched me in this lecture is that the lectures of Srila Prabhupada are eternal. They are transcendental and actual in all times. When Prabhupada was talking about medicine, about medical science, that we know something, but our knowledge are not perfect. At first, Prabhupada was talking For, for some reason, he was a pharmaceutical pharmacist. He was not just, uh, he had some relation to medicine. And naturally, he had some experience. By the time he came to the USA, he was 69. He had an experience of life in India. And also, he lived this uh, situation with the epidemic with various epidemics. So now when I heard what he said, that medical science is imperfect, I thought, how Prabhupada is right. And this is not the last virus, this is not last epidemic and not last pandemic. People in Kali Yuga, especially, they will face such problems. But the solution of these problems uh, is not in vaccination. But Vedic knowledge, which was discussed here, it looks uh, at the root, not just to solve some, not just to cure somebody from the virus, not just to solve the problem of pand pandemia, but to, to cut the material existence of the weapon of renunciation. And it uh, touched me after Prabhupada told about who is Krishna, he gradually came to the thought that we have to surrender to Guru. Such moments are very inspiring. Such simple things that uh, I hear from Srila Prabhupada, we may know these shlokas, we may know their meaning, but when Prabhupada is talking about it, once again, it, it naturally strengthen our faith. We have to listen to Prabhupada, apart from lectures of our spiritual masters, apart from some book, other, other books. We need to listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures and we have to uh, study his books. This is his desire, this is his instruction, and we have to do it every, every time, regularly. This is what I could tell now. Thank you. Karabajan Prabhu, please continue. Are you feeling well? Thank you. Yes. More or less. Today I have a little problems with my lungs, so I will take some medicines. Do I need to talk? Am I the next? Yes. Shisantana Prabhu finished. He, he, he began from uh, medical science. That medical science 
doesn't know about the whole process of body working and the virus and so on. So we don't know how our body is, how the food is digested. I think this is natural. However, people are scientific and educated, but to the end it's impossible to see who is standing behind all these processes. Just like a child who is, who is fed by his parents until his consciousness will be adult, he will never understand. He is just fed by, by God. And I remembered how Krishna in Bhagavad Gita describes uh, in the beginning of the lecture, Prabhupada says that Krishna is love. Radha Madhava. He is all attractive. And Prabhupada said that only love can attract. And this love as the original father in the material world. We may see his love uh, reflected in uh, selflessness as a part of love. He takes care of everyone, about uh, every living entity in the material world. I remember how in 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that he becomes sun, he becomes a moon. Srila Prabhupada was mentioning today about sunshine that sun provides the life for everyone and the, due to rains and then he becomes moon and gives energy to all the vegetables and fruits gives the juice of prana to everything and then we eat it and Krishna digests it as Krishna said about it he becomes a fire of digestion and digests everything and medical science do not know to the end this process of digestion that this happens due to Krishna's energy and Krishna doesn't has to do anything he doesn't need anything but nevertheless he does this why? selflessly absolutely selflessly just like father takes care of his children because he understands that they they won't be able to fulfill their desires and they can be independent without him and he doesn't need anything and this is uh, wonderful and further in the 15th chapter Krishna says that he supports all the life of, of everyone, he digest, digests all food and in the end he says that I am in the heart of everyone and uh, memory, knowledge and forgetfulness also come from me, I am the knower of the Vedas, I am the founder of Vedas and the goal of all Vedas is to reach me. Through the Vedas, he is addressing to adults who can understand and who also can understand his as expansion of love and to move in this direction. It, was, it seemed wonderful to me how in all our existence and our life um, the Lord's selflessness is manifested and by this way we can understand Krishna we can understand how he is selfless how he how selflessly serves us we don't deserve it but he continues to selflessly takes care of us and when we understand this we become able to express some selflessness toward God and the culmination of selflessness 
when the living entity starts to serve, beginning spiritualizing his senses. As Prabhupada said that we can... Srila Prabhupada today cites uh, Bhakti Bhagavad Gita. And we can understand him becoming his Bhakta, his friend, very close friend. And consequently, engaging our senses. As we yesterday read Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto, 87th chapter, where Krishna, Shukadeva Goswami answers the question of Maharaja Parikshit, how can we perceive transcendental God? Transcendental means Nirguna, having no material qualities, although he is the source of everything, but he is out of everything, he is Ananda. But we have material senses, we are conditioned, and how can we perceive some, something transcendental? Shukadeva Goswami says that a very interesting thing, the Lord is very merciful. He gave us the potential in the material energy, how to connect us, how to condition us, and how to liberate us. Material gunas modes, they may entrap us and they may liberate us. It's the process of bhakti when we engage our feelings, senses into the service of God, and these senses in the right mood, then the, the Lord, by His sweet will, He manifests Himself. And He spiritualizes our senses. He, is, he becomes approachable to, to our senses. Or as Bhagavad Gita says that He gives other eyes, spiritual eyes, and spiritualizes our senses. This is what I could say about it. Thank you. Is Mahendra here? Unfortunately, he is probably in the altar. May Avantika say something? Hare Krishna, dear devotees. In this lecture of Srila Prabhupada, I'm, I really liked what he said about Vaishnavas, they see Krishna non-different from his creation and from his potency. And this way, as far as I can understand, that we can contact Krishna in our everyday life. And also, Srila Prabhupada is uh, proving, is telling about personal relationships with super soul and devotee. The Lord says, the Lord gives the understanding how to come to Him. These are personal relationships, this is His response, and this love, uh, which Prabhupada was talking about, this love uh, from Krishna, and it attract, attracts us to Him. This is not a one-way game, but the immediate experience that devotee may get in the process of his practice. This vasa or taste, ruchi, which is uh, from the first day devotee may practice in his life. And this is a very wonderful thing, as it was very touching for me, what I can say. Thank you. I will now see in the text of the verse and also to the purport of Srila Prabhupada. A little bit I will tell about it, if no one is um, against it. So the text is, life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self-preservation, since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. 
So here is said that there are desires, abundant desires, abundant desires, which comes from the abundant intelligence. He, he may create artificial desires without any need, just to satisfy the senses. And this way desires may increase, and just like shops, supermarkets, hypermarkets, and so on and so on. All the world is becoming like one big market. And there is no end to this variegatedness because senses, they require new forms, new notions, new relationships, new culture, new fashion, new dress. And this is called the progress of the modern society. But it is said here that you shouldn't do it because this uh, abundant intelligence, intelligence must be directed toward, toward the uh, study the absolute truth. And there all our desires all may be satisfied only there, only in one object. You must find one object which, which is able to satisfy all our desires, all our needs. And why, uh, why do we have these senses? Just for healthy life. This is a moment of self-preservation. The lifestyle, regulated food, sleep, activity. It is said in the verse, and Prabhupada in the purport immediately says about the, this, this thing, a revolutionary thing. The completely bewildered material civilization is wrongly directed towards the fulfillment of desires in sense gratification. This is the first sentence you see. Prabhupada is saying that civilization is false, bewildered, completely bewildered, and directed in a wrong direction. In such civilization, in all spheres of life, the ultimate end is sense gratification. In politics, social service, altruism, philanthropy, and ultimately in religion or even in salvation, the very same tint of sense gratification is ever increasingly predominant. Prabhupada sees this tendency how, as, as an acharya of our movement he wants to create another direction of the civilization he wants to create ISKCON where people won't follow the de desires of the senses and they may should be satisfied by the healthy lifestyle and asking about absolute truth and this will be the real progress of civilization which is planned from above of the God's will and this process will be supported uh, and will be always important we shouldn't replace it by anything else and in these spheres even where we have some authoritative positions and even in religion which shouldn't be uh, indulging the senses but still it really indulges them and it has not the power to stop it what is what would stop the feelings or the senses even religion is weak sense gratification is only manifested on also in religion in the political field the leaders of men fight with one another to fulfill their personal sense gratification the voters adore the so-called leaders only when they promise sense gratification as soon as the voters are dissatisfied in their own sense satisfaction, they dethrone the leaders. The leaders must always disappoint the voters by not satisfying their senses. The same is applicable in all other fields. No one is serious about the problems of life. So under the influence of the senses, people forget about serious problems of life. For them, the birth, death, and diseases is not, is, is not important. They are covered by the, this force of the senses. The intelligence is covered. Intelligence knows about this birth, death, and diseases. Um, but it, it, it is like uh, in the shadow or, or covered. It doesn't, you see, it's, 
It sees that it's so far away and forgets about it. He sees and he doesn't see. This is the force of, of the senses. Even those who are on the path of salvation desire to become one with the Absolute Truth and desire to commit spiritual suicide for sense gratification, just to feel himself God. People even ready for such things, they are searching for salvation in this way, committing spiritual suicide. Just imagine the power of the senses. But the Bhagavatam says that one should not live for sense gratification. But how, if the senses are so strong, how can we live in a different way? One should satisfy the senses only in so much as required for self-preservation and not for sense gratification. Because the body is made of senses, which also requires a certain amount of satisfaction, there are regulative directions for satisfaction of such senses. So we, we have betters for this. What is lost in the world, this is the, the tradition of Vedic knowledge and culture, and the system of Acharyas is absent. There is some kind of a prototype in the material world. In this in this world, there are some t false teachers. There are some politicians who should rule the society. There are scientists, but these are only pro prototypes of Vedic culture, of just a reflection or a shadow of real original leaders. Because the real leaders they are able to regulate their feeling, their senses. This is a criteria, not just because of this, their position, but how much they are able to control their senses. And we all know that they, that they, they do not know, they, they, they can do it. There are, there are some scandals and there are some weaknesses. It is known, and people like these scandal stories, they like to hear this news, how leaders are. Uh, disqualify themselves. But the senses are not meant for unrestricted enjoyment. For example, marriage or the combination of a man with a woman is necessary for progeny, but it is not meant for sense enjoyment. In the absence of voluntary restraint, there is propaganda for family planning, but foolish men do not know that family planning is automatically executed as soon as there is search after the Absolute Truth. You see, there are some abundant sciences in the material world. Psychology, metaphysics, there are many isms, many um, topics and sciences, but if we have one goal, absolute truth, then all these sciences are filled. We shouldn't create some separate sciences for that, separate files. Everything we have in one big file, just like in a big ocean, we have all reservoirs of water. We shouldn't be interested just in some ponds or streams some springs, because everything is in the ocean. Seekers of the Absolute Truth are never allured by unnecessary engagements and sense gratification, because the serious students seeking the... This is just seekers who are just searching for the Absolute Truth. They are already never allured by unnecessary engagements and sense gratification. So the Absolute Truth is stronger. Because the serious students seeking the Absolute Truth are always overwhelmed by with the work of researching the Truth. In every sphere of life, therefore, the ultimate end must be seeking after the Absolute Truth. Meaning, Absolute Truth, this is what every, everyone would like to feel or to conceive. Because we have everything in this, in this world. Everything is desirable in this world, Absolute Truth. And this is something... It contains everything, even, even things we can imagine. Of course I want to know this. If I believe in the Absolute Truth, imagine how... My interest to life becomes so deep and so big 
that even sense gratification is not interested anymore. And that sort of engagement will make one happy, because he will be less engaged in varieties of sense gratification. And what that absolute truth is, is explained as follows. This will be the secret. The absolute truth is, um, is not yet um, accessible for us. We, we haven't seen the definition of absolute truth. We are, we are just seeking for it. Uh, we are not blind already. We already see Tatva Darshana. And uh, we know that truth is not something static, it's not some material object. This is a living, dynamic, endless force, living force. We may study it only in the, in the relationship with it. It's impossible to see it from outside, to copy it uh, or to put aside in parts because it's so dynamic. In a different moment it will be different. It's, it is dynamic, it's progressing, it's developing. And this dynamics is the ecstasy, this is relationship, and bhakti means relationship. We start in relationship with God, uh, and at first it is slow, not very dynamically, not very ecstatically, as much as our body allows us and our education, our intelligence, we start from simple things, we just start to repeat the holy names. This is the beginning of this dynamics. And here sometimes we there is a, some, some blow, a blow in our consciousness. We see that there is an illusion around us and immediately the mantra may immediately pull out these roots of materialism and to change our soil and we have to adapt to to a different spiritual life and we are creating families on different soil and our professional duties we fulfill also on a different platform so we need some time to adapt and to to enroot ourselves in the spiritual environment. We should learn that a spiritual environment gives me guarantees, absolute guarantees of the absolute provision. We shouldn't take we shouldn't really worry about material needs. We just perform our duties for Krishna because the material world is full of anxieties. Because no one can be sure that their material desires will be fulfilled. This is a bewildered civilization, they they execute their duties, but they fail. But life in the absolute truth has a different nature, non-karmic. No one takes care of himself because there is love, there is God, there is the truth. And this truth supports everything. This is the dharma, this is this love. This is the fulfillment of our dreams, which we are searching for. As Prabhupada, we are searching in the mirage. And these roots, we used to be fed by the modes of material nature, by the fruits of our activities, but in Iskorn we don't have such, uh, such nutrition. And we ask ourselves how to live, how to go on living. But because we are chanting, because we are listening to Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, we, our, our roots become deeper and deeper in the Absolute Truth. This is the, the relationship, close, spiritual, the closest, the most spiritual relationship. Therefore, chanting the names of Krishna, offering prasadam, I was reading the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita and there was it, it was said about the food that devotees of God they don't touch uh, sin they never are contaminated by sin because they eat spiritualized food just one factor is explaining Bhagavad Gita how to be pure uh, sanctified food and offered food is just one thing we take care of the products and the purity but we don't have the desire to f satisfy our senses but the desire to satisfy the senses of the lord and this food liberates us from sin 
This is the example. And those who don't offer the food but just eat, they are thieves, they are rascals, and they're eating their own sins. It is said in Bhagavad Gita. So this food, like a vaccine, it uh, defends us from material infection, from this pandem pandemic of desires, of material desires. These desires are increasing and increasing, just like viruses, new and new and new viruses, new and new desires, material desires. We see that this uh, race of the human passion, uh, it increases degradation of everything on this planet. These inferior forces are increasing and they become to, they start to destroy humans. And therefore, Prabhupada says that this is false, this civilization is false. And he says in the purpose that the family is not meant for sense gratification. This is the family life is killing people now. Destroys all, all people. This is such a pan pandemic of family tragedies. Why? Because they are searching for sense gratification there. I won't uh, talk about this topic. It's, it's really abominable of what is marriage now. But Prabhupada says um, the marriage is meant for progeny. They know about it and, and don't know about it. They know and don't know about it. If you will tell them about the progeny, they will say that, yes, we know. But they act differently. They act just like senses tell them to do. So where should we take this force, this force in the absolute truth? Human pe humans, they got this force in absolute truth which allows them to act. And even seekers of absolute truth, they're already not attracted by sense gratification. Even the small step is defending us from degradation. This is not a big problem. Even, a, even some failures are not, uh, are not a tragedy, because when a person will rise, he will move in a different direction. You see how absolute truth maintains a human being. It gives us the power to to discern, to find the force in, in ourselves. And Prabhupada commands, and the next text will be the absolute truth. And this is topics will be next for us. We don't know about it yet. So please, if there is some additions or some questions. Yes, Sri Santana Goswami. Switch on the microphone. Thank you, Chandra Charam Prabhu, for reading and commenting this verse and the purpose. When you were reading, I also was intensively watching, and it is said in the politics uh, and uh, philanthropy and even in religion there is the same tint of sense gratification which is predominant in the political field the leaders of men fight with one another to fulfill the personal sense gratification and we see to, there will be soon elections in, in belarus and i read the news that the current president is moving away all the rivals people don't like it and if, without all these political details, and if we look at the situation from the Bhagavatam point of view, people, they want to gratify their senses. They don't like this president. But what will happen with the next president? Will be the same sense gratification, the same in, the, the same in, the, in Russia. We don't like the president who is um, ruling for 20 years, but who knows what will the next president will do. It doesn't matter if he will be the same from the same party or from the opposing party, and the same in the America. There are some protests, 
They don't like Trump, but what will happen with the next president? It will be the same, sense gratification. So until people don't change their direction to the absolute truth, people will, will suffer and doesn't matter which president will be. And when president was addressing his guru and said that India now is in in a colonial dependence from Britain, and Sibhagasat Saraswati said that the message of the Lord Chaitanya is so important that it doesn't, it doesn't depend from the politics. It doesn't matter if India is dependent or independent. It doesn't depend on any president. It doesn't matter. If people change their consciousness, if people stop or be directed at the sense gratification or direct their uh, consciousness on the gratifying the sense of the Lord, just the verse which was ci cited by Karabajna Prabhunshila Prabhupada in the lecture, then the quality of life will change, the consciousness will change, and consequently what people will be happy. And for that we should uh, put efforts, we must give people this, this direction, we must give the, them this method and we must be uh, worth uh, representative of this knowledge. Thank you. Karabajana Prabhu, will you add something? Yes, but at first I will ask the devotees who are present here to say something. Rajamani Prabhu? Or he's out. Rajamani Prabhu is here. Rajamani Prabhu is here. Rajamani Prabhu is not here, but other appeared here. Give Hari Prabhu, please. And Mahendra. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept my obeisances, dear Vaishnavas. I am very happy to, to see you, all of you, uh, well. And I'm grateful to, uh, for having an opportunity to discuss uh, this Bhagavatam with you. I was noting, I was writing down what Srila Prabhupada was saying. There are some moments like, which I wanted, which were, I was astonished by. After this marathon, I just wanted to say for three months the reading of Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, um, associating with Srila Prabhupada's disciples every evening we were just bathing in this in this glorifying of Srila Prabhupada how disciples were uh, revealing different uh, aspects of Srila Prabhupada uh, because Prabhupada had individual relationship with each disciple and more and more uh, I felt fall in love with Srila Prabhupada and understand how much he is wonderful personality having this endless love which is enough for everyone, all living entities it is said that Shima, it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam for everyone, Srila Prabhupada, he wrote something for everyone, and every person will find his personal message. And in the beginning of the lecture, Srila Prabhupada, he was citing the verse from Upanishad, which I like very much. I may cite it. Supreme Lord, 
This is the Lord of the Lords. He is the greatest of all rulers of planets, and everyone is subordinate to him. However, opulent is a living entity. All, all the opulence he got from the Supreme Lord, and no one is independent from him. And the Lord who is worshipable for, for all demigods, the Supreme Lord, and all others are subordinate to him. He is high all the, of all the demigods and deserves the worship of everyone. No one is higher than him, the highest reason of all reasons. And his energies are so perfect that they uh, fulfill here as Prabhupada said, that the Lord doesn't do anything himself. He, he has no duties. Everything is done by his energies. And the example of the moon and the sun. So Prabhupada said that there is a brain. And people, they don't, they, they think that everything is acting by itself. And we don't even notice how material nature works. But actually, there is a brain who rules everything. And the selflessness, which Karabajna was talking about, the Lord is selflessly gives, especially Lord Chaitanya, he gives out the love to himself. Because in the material world, as Shri Prabhupada said, there is a reflection of this. Everything here is illusory, just like a mirage in the desert. People don't understand it. And Shri Prabhupada again says that the purpose of a movement to teach people to understand that all this is illusion. And I would like to speak about selflessness I was reading recently that in Italy, one old old man, more than 80 years, he recovered from the coronavirus, and after he was recovered, uh, the doctors uh, gave him a bill that he used some special medical apparatus. <coughs> No, it was really a huge bill, and the old pe man was crying. He was surprised, and the do doctor asked him, he said that I am not crying because it's so expensive. I'm crying that for how many years I lived and how many years I was breathing by this air, and I... And I didn't have to pay for that air to the one who is providing me with this air. So he realized that he must, he was breathing all his life and the God didn't force him to pay for it. What else should I say? Uh, another thing was, I remembered, in the verse it is said that we need to wish a healthy life, self-preservation. And in the purport and in the lecture, Prabhupada don't speak about that we must be healthy. He doesn't say how, how we should be healthy, how should we eat how to take medicines. Mostly he said about that we should learn to control our senses. And upon learning it, we will have, um, we will have the, that health automatically because we will be able to continue our service. This is what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Mahendra Prabhu is this. Вроде бы здесь Махендра Прабу, если вы нас слышите, вы можете себе включить микрофон или видео вместе с микрофоном. Nimai Hari Prabhu, do you want to add something? 
Не мог ходить пробу вроде включил. Говорить не могу. Пошел через компьютер. А, это он написал, да? Ну что ж, тогда может суммировать. So now maybe we will resume what we will say. Maybe there is some questions. I don't see any questions right now. I will look at another platform. I don't see any questions right now. Maybe devotees will ask some questions right now. Yes, there is one question. Um, how to be in the mood of a servant? I think how to practically be in the mood of the servant having an administrative service. There is a danger to think that I'm important. Is it enough to be under the guidance of seniors who um, delegated the service to us? So, devotees, you please answer this question. Maybe Shisat Nagaswami. Hare Krishna, thank you for your trust. A good question. If you think about it, that being a leader, you must be humble. You must be in a humble mood. This is very good. How to do it practically? At first, uh, you must associate with devotees uh, more often with your subordinates in a friendly conversation, in the atmosphere of love and trust, without commanding. So apart from administrative relationship, we have just um, we have to have a human relationship. This is the basis. We don't have wages in our society. We don't have uh, uh, any other administrative tools. Srila Prabhupada said that our society is based on love and trust, and therefore administ administrator must be also based on these qualities. <coughs> and also there, is, there must be preaching. If a leader preaches himself, if he, if he moves forward, if he tries to inspire other devotees to preach, then it will give a certain, a certain force, and Krishna will certainly give intelligence to such a person. But if a person is executing simply administrative functions, this is wrong. Krishna will give us intelligence uh, Shil Prabhupada said that preaching must be in the first place. And also we should take care of devotees if somebody is sick. We must help. We must uh, put aside all meetings on all important dealings and to help this person. If somebody needs in some money, don't think that money is Maya and we must take care of devotees. And devotees who get this care, they are ready to serve. We see this in the 
example of relationship of Srila Prabhupada with his disciples. Example where there was in India there were uh, criminals who were attacking devotees. Devotees they they were ready to fight with them. Later Prabhupada said I know about he said that you went through so, such tribulations for me. He appreciated this devotion, and devotees were also appreciating Prabhupada. In other words, if devotee needs in something, we must be generous to them, to, the, to our subordinates. This quality of generosity, it must be there in the, lead, in the leader. If he is um, greedy, it's uh, it's not normal. This is what I could think of. Should I, should I ask some? Yes, next question, please. Next question is Daimai Prabhu. Dear Guru Dev, this is to you. How to switch off from the old source and not to take care of myself and to gradually move to new spiritual source? My family doesn't want to be switched off from the old source. At first, um, baby feeds by mother's milk. He won't be able to digest something else. He doesn't have teeth, he just was born. And this mother's milk is already here for him. This is her love. And gradually they add some other food which will be digested by him. He is enrooted in this life gradually because he will be dependent from food all his life and when he takes some first grains he gets adapted he may be sick he's given some some medical things and step by step he's adapted to this to through this life he was uprooted from another environment when he was uh, connected with his mother he was in the womb he didn't eat anything, he had different principles of existence, but he, he must be um, independent. And it means that you have some indigestion right now, you get adapted to a new food. And when you will be able to, when you will be able to use your material activity in, in this devotional service, you will feel more and more enthusiasm and energy and happiness. And so far, I feel happiness from some activity, from another activity, I don't feel happiness, but the material world is a, is a contamination, and you must defend yourself from this contamination and to learn how to stay pure, contacting with materialists, with this material system. We, knew, we know that uh, thanks to good Japa you may wash it away uh, due to starting Srimad Bhagavatam and association with devotees. You have these methods of purification and of feeding this pure purity. You may resist this contamination. Prasadam is defending you. And this way, gradually, gradually, you raise on your feet. You know how to sleep, how to defend yourself, how to be secure in this world. You can do it in, in Krishna consciousness gradually. Uh, until you have material body, you also have some unpleasant things. As long as you have material body, we have, we have to be tolerant to that. To, to use all this karma. To, I don't know how, how it was understandable for you. Thank you very much.
следующий вопрос давайте тогда зачитаем. Next question. Я думаю, что достаточно емко объяснили. Анастасия Матер спрашивает. Матер спрашивает, uh, when our marriage is um, divorced, it means that our family is interrupted. What the woman should do? to create another family or to be renounced from family life. Um, actually, as for the family, it doesn't exist, actually. Our family traditions are dead, actually. Prabhupada didn't worry about it when he saw his Western habits and Western traditions, he saw that there is, actually there is no family. Marriage is a, is a fantasy. He said, okay, you have one attachment less. It will be easier to get attached to Krishna. You can live like that. You may surrender to Krishna even in a bad, bad marriage or in a bad, in a even having some tragedy in life. So Prabhupada didn't worry. He was giving initiations to his disciples, he was marrying them to, to have some order, to have some ashrams. Later he saw that marriages are just, just uh, they just fall apart immediately, even after fire sacrifices. After some time people just fall apart. And then he just stopped to pay attention to that. Just live as you can live but just to serve. The notion of the family uh, is based on the search of abs absolute truth. This heritage uh, it means uh, spiritual heritage. If my relatives are also must be our gurus, but we don't have such families right now. We don't get some spiritual instructions from our relatives. On the contrary, we get resistance from them. They don't want us to be devotees. So there is, n there is just a fantasy or a shadow where people just uh, satisfy their senses. And because feelings are... Um, they, they become overwhelmed, so all these um, races, their families, they fall apart. Our family is a Guru Parampara right now. Thank you very much. Next question is... Radharani is internal potence of Krishna. Purnamasi is also internal energy of Krishna. But Radha and Purnamasi is the same personality. This is, uh, comes from Krishna. Uh, any mood is personified by some personality. And all this is an internal energy. Radharani is, is the closest his uh, personal internal energy from which all the other energies expand. We can say like that. But these are different personalities, Yoga Maya and Radharani. Next question is from Mataji Adyamanjali. Dear Guru Dev, how to serve non-devotees, how not to be attached uh, to their staying in Iskorn and don't worry if they go away? How to serve non-devotees without attachment uh, to their staying or not staying in Iskorn? What to do when they go away, when they leave our society? On the contrary, this is good, because they go away for some reason. If they are staying with their material desires, they have, they would, we would have many problems, but they go away in the material world with certain knowledge. But this is very good. This is very useful for the world. Maybe for us this is a kind of a disappointment, but for the world is useful. There is no loss, because people with material desires staying in scorn, they may cause many anxieties. 
Therefore, they live with something, so be happy. Be happy that they have something, uh, some some luggage, and they leave us with with this knowledge. So may, they may come back to the practice of practice in some in some somewhere else. If they got some knowledge. Now they leave in the material world, having their own businesses, and but they will remember some things and they will implement something apply they will have their own practice and their life will be purified gradually and people will learn many interesting things from them if they got some no spiritual knowledge they may transfer it in their own way and this way society will change under the influence of such people who were here heard something saw something felt something they were in ecstasy and they then left they remember this ecstasy, this, uh, this science, and they also, this mood is emanates from them, of the mood of knowledge, and they also influence the society, such people. They may not practice uh, Krishna consciousness, but they may have uh, faith in karma or incarnation. It's enough to influence the world. And gradually they will be purified and they will come they will come to some practice sooner or later. But with material desires, it's very difficult to be in a scorn. Next question is from Ekaterina. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, can I read additional literature like Harinama Chintamani without reading all the books of Srila Prabhupada? We didn't have at that time, we didn't have all books of Srila Prabhupada, but we had Harinama Chintamani and we were reading everything. All, this is all literature about devotional service and we were reading everything available. I don't know what to tell. We didn't have rigid rules or some prohibitions. For example, if it's interesting, if I'm interested in Harinama Chintamani, I'm just reading the third canto of Shimad Bhagavatam, and I'm interested in Harinama Chintamani. But it, this is prohibited, because I didn't read all the books of Srila Prabhupada. But I will read Shimad Bhagavatam and think, what is there in Harinama Chintamani? I won't be able to read Shimad Bhagavatam quietly. So you just uh, look at this Harinama Chintamani, you won't understand anything there, and you will come back to Shimad Bhagavatam. This is a very difficult book. Just like Vedanta Sutra, devotees sometimes think, what is Vedanta Sutra? This is the Veda Aunt, this is the, the top of all Vedas. What is Vedanta Sutra? But it's, we can't understand anything there. And again, we, we come back to Bhagavad Gita. It's okay, just look there, look here, read Garuda Purana, Narada Pancharatra and something else. Brahma Samhita, read, read Brahma Samhita with the purpose of Bhagavad Pesan Saraswati and you will understand that it's better to read Srila Prabhupada's books. Thank you. Next question is from Alexander. The satisfaction, sense satisfaction, if I, I can't control my eating, I'm overeating and it's not enough for me to sleep six years, can it be, is it dangerous for my practice, may I fall from my 16 rounds and four principles? Yes, gradually it may happen, but we hope that it won't happen. We hope that the person will, will, will control their sentence. Because the tongue is a very strong feeling, I understand. This is a type of people who, who overeat all the time. But you will be sick then. Uh, sooner or later you will have to control it. But we'll hope that it will be all right with you. Uh, at least you eat prasadam. Maybe you will die, but from prasadam. And we'll go to God. Surely. I don't know what to say. Everyone has some difficulties from tongue. 
somebody has problems from speaking a lot, he can control his speech. So we have all diff difficulties. Uh, some people, they work a lot, too much. But for Krishna, you engage this, eat, eat prasadam at least, good prasadam. How not to be afraid of the death? It's so actual right now. There are so many deaths, so many victims of the virus. How to have, how to keep Krishna in the mind and in the in the head? This is illusory fear because this, uh, because people are dying not from the virus right now, but from the old age, from other diseases. People are dying all the time, not, not just from coronavirus. Now, this is a Mritya Loka where we live. Death is an, in every step. This is an illusion if you think that there's, without epidemic, no, will, no one will die. Everyone is dying. Everyone is dying. Therefore, don't think about the epidemic, about the reason about the disease as a reason of death, because disease is not the death, but the sign of the death. The, death. the very death is, is not really fearful. The, the, the messengers of death are really horrible, but the death is not fearful. It just liberates us from all our problems, and when you die, you understand that you didn't die. It's not really pleasant to leave everything. I didn't, I didn't end many things. I didn't eat enough, didn't drink, didn't finish my things. <coughs> Death finishes everything. And later you think that, oh, I'm so good, I lost everything. So please take care about the new birth more than about the death. Take care of your next birth, so it will be better than this birth. Switch your intention to the new development in a, in a spiritual body or in a heavenly planet. You have a plan which will you show to Yamadutas later. Death will come and it will come without any uh, without any <coughs> future note. So you think about it right now. What do you desire right now? So let's switch your desires from this world to Vaikuntha. Thank you. Do we have some time for questions? We have several minutes. Dmitry asks, if I'm practicing Hare Krishna, should I be in a scorn? Why? Uh, Hare Krishna is for all people. Maybe scorn, maybe not a scorn. There are no limitations. Hare Krishna mantra is not limited to anything and has no strict rules. You may chant, you may chant anywhere, everywhere. This is our cho choice of our heart. You shouldn't do anything. Thank you. Kilena asks, how, how to deal with uh, envy? I, I avoid the association of envious people. Will it help me? And also there is, um, they, they speak that the envy shows the area which we must develop. No, don't you start with the duty. Any duty must be executed with any price. If you are envious or, or not envious, follow the path of duty. It will liberate us gradually. This is the path of service. Service is the medicine from the envy. envy. So you start from service in your life. Now you switched on to the en envy. You understood that the envy is a key, key vice, which contains all other vices. But 
Don't think about it, wise. Think about your duty, about your karma. And any, by any means you follow your duty. It may be difficult, because we have envy, we have an artless, but following the path of duty we may stop envy. Hare Krishna, I start chanting Japa and I heard that I must turn the beads uh, on the opposite when I, when I finish the round. It can be different. We have different minds. There are people with left hand or right hand domination. We have different natures. It can be different, and there are no instructions from Srila Prabhupada about that, and I never heard about it, how to turn our beads, I never heard about it. So I don't think that this is important. If it would be important, Prabhupada would, would tell us that, it's, that it can be only by the, from the left to right or on the contrary. He didn't tell anything about it. <coughs> People turn in all ways, but just the, the chant. <laughs> Tatiana asked, Dear Guru Maharaj, you were talking about absolute um, prediction, and what about suicide? How to understand that the suicidal person lives in a subtle body, uh, the quantity of years they had to live in a gross body? Is it prescribed? This is like a road. You go to the airport or on the railway station, and you see that trains are moving in different directions. And everything is working, but you are cho you are choosing. In this predestination, you have some choice. There are stations with bigger choices, less choices, that are, or with no choice. For example, if in, in a when you go to prison, you have no choice. Everything is already chosen for you. No one is asking you. If you have a better karma, you have a different station where you have uh, more choice. In a best cho in a best karma, you can you can choose any direction just as you like. This is predestined. So it doesn't. It means the most important question is on which railway station are you? A suicidal person. You may uh, deny your ticket on any station, but usually you have needs. Only rare, rare people they 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 throw out the ticket, but this is also predestined. We all have such such a choice. For example, now you have navigators in a car, and navigator shows you the road. If you go straight you will have a, a turn right. But if you miss this turn, if you didn't notice it, what will happen? The route is changed, but the goal is, di is the same. The goal is the same, but the route may be changed, transformed. This is all predestined. You can go this way or that way, but you must reach your goal by your predestination. This is a very co complex topic about this uh, karmic laws. Don't go deep there. There is karma, vikarma, karma. Let's understand these things and start to act correctly. And then all the bad, all, all the karma will be dissipated and you will have only the freedom of choice always only the freedom of choice when it will happen when it will be when we learn to use it correctly it, you, and you won't be worried by the life of your body it will be done automatically and when you die you just go away where you want to go 
And you get full freedom, you are, you are a soul. So now we, we have 10 o'clock, we may stop here. Dear devotees, thank you very much for everyone, for participation. Maybe one, one more question. Mataji asks, please give an, an answer. I want to criticize how to get rid of cri criti cri critics. We must write critical articles about materialists. We need to let out this energy of criticism to this. Because we shouldn't criticize devotees. They have more good qualities. Because if your cri criticism helps devotees, you may criticize them. If it helps, if it, if it um, prevents them, don't prevent uh, the spiritual life. This is a great. This is the greatest sin. But if this criticism helps, learn to criticize usefully, in a kind way, constructively, in a just way. Then it will be precious. But simply to criticize is dangerous. Please uh, direct it on materialists. For example, Hitler, you may criticize him just in the biggest way. You can take Stalin or Napoleon, Hirani Kashipu, you may criticize him. If there is an object, you direct your energy there. Don't interrupt uh, devotees' activities. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, all senior devotees and the audience. There are many questions. On Monday, you may participate in discussion and then repeat your questions. And where that questions are, they're on YouTube, on your channel. I may copy to you and send. And during the next class of Shimad Bhagavatam, we may, uh, we may answer these questions. There are some interesting questions. Okay, I will do it. With Karabajan Prabhu, we will... We'll so, sort them out. And we may we may even plan some day for questions and answer que session. Thank you to everyone.